welcome to the physics of skateboarding. Not many people understand skateboarding, let alone the physics of it. Uh, particularly the main trick of it, which is called the ollie. Most people just think you kind of jump off the ground, the board sticks to your feet, you just stay in the air for a bit, then you go back down and land like some kind of magic just happened. Something a little like this. Okay, and that last clip is basically what I perceive as what people think an ollie really is. If it seems right, I'm sorry, it shouldn't have. It disobeys every law of physics known to man. If that made sense to you, then that probably would also make about as much sense as mid-ollie, you're in the air, you disappear, you spin in space, and then you come back, and then your friends appear and stuff. Like this! Uh. Where were you? I don't know! And that last clip was just complete, utter nonsense. It shouldn't have made sense. I hope you enjoyed it. It took me three hours. You're welcome. Now, for those of you who don't know what an ollie is, the ollie is the most basic trick of skateboarding. It's basically where you jump off the ground and pop the board. The board goes with you, then you go back down to the ground. So, a quick explanation would be, your feet positioning would be roughly about here. This would be the tail of the board and you pop the board like this. So you can see the pop allowed this end to pop up uh, as a result. And then when you pop, you raise this foot as the foot goes with the board. This prevents the board from going like this, which would normally happen, as I will show in this clip. And back. Okay, and once it's there, it basically cancels any horizontal motion and makes it all vertical. In this, the foot which rises makes the top of the board stop and the back continues to rise. At this point, the feet are still on the board even like this. Most people wonder at this point why the board still sticks to your feet. This is due to friction from the grip tape on the rubber of your shoes and also when the board's this high, this is when you start pushing down. So you're applying more force than gravity is. So the result is the board sticking to your feet as it goes back down. Okay. So an example of an ollie would be a little something like this. Just a small ollie just to get off the ground, you pop the board, get in the air and you land back down. And in this clip you'll be able to see me ollie a lot higher because I applied a lot more force to the tail. And when taking note of this you can see the mechanics which I just described, such as popping the board, the front of the board rising up, the foot sliding up to cancel any horizontal motion, the back of the board rising, until it gets to the apex and then the feet pushing back down on the board till you land. Now that you've seen what an ollie is, now we can get into the actual physics at work in it. And one particular instance you have to understand a few things, such as mechanical advantage. You would show this most uh apparently with a lever, such as this. It's very simple. It's comprised of the lever itself as well as the fulcrum, which is the point or a pivot point. Everyone's most familiar with the level is you can just balance things. This means there's a ratio of one to one. So whatever force you push down this side with, it'll lift up with that much force on the opposite side. But what if the lever isn't perfectly level to the fulcrum, meaning it's not in the middle of the lever? In this case, this is what, where we apply mechanical advantage. You can apply more force over less distance. In such circumstance, if the fulcrum was placed here, this distance is one half the distance here. So you'd have to apply twice as much force to get half as much force pushed up here. But the, and in most instances, it'd be the other way around. So if there's a heavy object here, you would push down with half as much force here to lift it half as high. And the trade-off here is usually you can apply less force, but over a smaller amount of distance. So the work is still proportional to each other. Now, if we look back at a skateboard again, we can see it's just like a glorified lever. It's just a little different from the other one we were just looking at. In this case, the 
could be a fulcrum in either case. In this case, we're going with the one with the tail. So the fulcrum would be the wheel, and then this would be one side of the lever, as well as this being the other side of the lever. And because the length of the tail is about seven inches, and the length from this, which is the wheel, to the other side of the board is about 21 inches, there's a three to one ratio in this. So you apply a certain amount of force here, it'll lift with one third the force here, but it will also go three times as far because of the distance. Hope that wasn't too boring, but be on the lookout for my next video. Plasma hoverboards, are they real?